Confused on Bitcoin's ETF game-changing potential and what impact it might have. This video is to guide you through the complexities featuring insights from top industry experts. Stay tuned till the very end where I do a critical segment on how I tie it back to crypto gaming and how it can affect popular titles like Big Time. A must watch for every savvy gamer, trader, and investor wanting to navigate this evolving landscape. Today, we'll cover insights from Kathy Wood and Anthony Pompliano on the Bitcoin ETF's impact, offering pivotal and interesting predictions. Understand Raw Pile's Everything Code, a groundbreaking framework that fuses macroeconomics and crypto, and how these developments could significantly influence the world of crypto gaming. GMGM GM to all the new faces and returning strategists. But before we get to everything, a quick Disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You can lose money in crypto and NFTs. Crypto world moves fast, so check the latest updates before making any decisions. Strap in, we'll be covering a lot, so I left time codes in the description below to make it easier to digest and come back to. Let's explore the impact of the Bitcoin ETF approval and looking at what industry experts are saying. First up, Kathy Wood, the visionary behind ARK Invest, shared her thoughts alongside other experts on the upcoming Bitcoin ETF. One thing that stood out was there's a wave of optimism about the long-term effects of this ETF, despite some short-term volatility and ripples in the market. The approval of the Bitcoin ETF could clear the fog of regulatory uncertainty, making Bitcoin a more attractive investment for advisors and cautious investors who value regulated, high-quality products. Wood emphasizes that Bitcoin scarcity and its emerging status as a unique asset class, this, she argues, could lead to significant institutional inflows in the long term. Bitcoin's role, according to her, is similar to digital gold. It's not just an investment, but it's a strategic diversifier for institutional portfolios, offering improved returns per unit of risk thanks to its low correlation with traditional assets. Experts, including Kathy, view Bitcoin and blockchain as a revolutionary force. They foresee a future where these technologies reshape global payment systems, influence monetary policies, and redefine investor portfolios. Remember our previous video where we discuss ARK Invest's Big Ideas report? Their predictions, for those of you who missed it, is a staggering by 2030. They foresee a bear case, bear case, keep in mind, of 258,000 per Bitcoin, a base case of 682,000, and hold your breath, a bull case of 1.48 million per single Bitcoin. These figures aren't just plucked out of the air, they're based on different scenarios that they include and do a deep dive inside the report of various scenarios, including various levels of institutional investment. And this is the start of that. Let's dive into Anthony Pompliano's perspective. He's known for his sharp Bitcoin insights and has laid out a series of predictions about the Bitcoin ETF, potential approval, and its market impact. So here are some of the highlights. Like many, he predicts that the ETF could get the green light on Wednesday. So by the time that you're seeing this later today, we'll have news of the Bitcoin ETF. And his prediction is that it'll be trading as soon as Thursday. In terms of initial investment, he anticipates an impressive 2 billion assets under management within 48 hours, ballooning to 5 billion in the first month. Significantly, Pomp expects that financial advisors could allocate about 1 to 3% of client assets to Bitcoin, a move that could have substantial implications for market dynamics. Now, let's turn to Sam Callahan, who appeared on Yahoo Finance from Swan Bitcoin, who shared his insights that add another layer to all of this. According to Callahan, a spot Bitcoin ETF would greatly simplify Bitcoin investments, especially for large institutions constrained by current regulations. He discusses the increased demand against Bitcoin's cap supply. And if large institutions pour billions into Bitcoin ETFs, we could see a significant uptick in Bitcoin's value and demand. And on the supply side, Callahan points out that Bitcoin's existing scarcity of 21 million Bitcoin could further be tightened by long-term holders. A, this factor alone could amplify the impact of institutional inflows as well. To add another dimension to this already multifaceted discussion, let's cover Anthony Pompliano's unique take from his newsletter. It's also free. I also highly recommend it. 
for deep dives into Bitcoin. I'm not sponsored by this at all. I just highly recommend it. And it's a place that I go for unique takes on Bitcoin. So link in the description below if you want to check that out. In his noteworthy piece, Bitcoin spot ETF may not be as bullish as you think. He presents a critical view suggesting that the market impact might not be as monumental as we anticipate. He points out that a staggering 70% of Bitcoin has not moved in over a year, suggesting a tighter liquid market cap of around $255 billion. This is a crucial insight as it implies that even if we saw a massive $100 billion in inflow, it might only elevate Bitcoin's price by about 40%. In practical terms, this would mean that Bitcoin would reach around $60,000, still shy of his, its historic peak of $69,000. So despite this, he clarifies that he is not bearish on Bitcoin, but anticipates an all-time high within the next 18 months, but not solely due to the spot Bitcoin ETF. Pompliano points out there's two other critical factors beyond the ETF that could propel Bitcoin's price upwards. First, it's the upcoming Bitcoin halving. This is a scheduled event, as some of you know, that slashes the daily new supply of Bitcoin in half that's given to the miners. This reduction in supply, especially in times of increasing demand, can significantly influence Bitcoin's value. Plus, there's a potential shift in global monetary policies as he anticipates more relaxed policies by the Federal Reserve and other centralized banks, often resulting in currency debasement, as we all fondly know, as printing money. He famously calls this the trade of our generation, which is to be long assets that benefit currency debasement. Merging nicely with insights from Raw Paul, and most of you know him, but he's the CEO of Real Vision and a former Goldman Sachs executive and one of the very few to predict the 2008 mortgage financial crisis. He presents a compelling investment framework. He's bullish on crypto and particularly as we head into 2024 and 2025, seeing a unique opportunity in the macroeconomic setup that supports cryptocurrencies growth and has one of the most in-depth frameworks that I've seen. So I'm going to do my best to summarize his main points, but he's been talking about this for a while and his most recent video called 2003 Masterclass Crypto, Macro, and Tech is a great one hour long deep dive into it. Link in the description below to check that out. I highly suggest that one as well. Let's unpack Raw Paul's in-depth framework, but there's key concepts that we need to understand first. Raw emphasizes the importance of the business cycle in macro investing and its impact on risk assets like crypto and tech stocks. The business cycle is the economy's rhythmic pattern of growth and decline consisting of four main phases expansion, peak, contraction or recession, and trough. Expansion is when the economy grows, businesses thrive, jobs are created, and spending increases. Peak is the highest growth point of the cycle where the economy reaches its maximum growth for that period. Contraction or recession is where the economy slows down, business profits may decrease, and consumer spending reduces and job losses can occur. And trough is the lowest part of the growth point, marking the end of the contraction phase and also the start of the new cycle and repeat of everything again. Currently, Raul notes that the ISM Institute for Supply Management Index, it's a key economic indicator measuring the health of manufacturing sector is below 50, which suggests that we have a weakening economy, but not critically so. The ISM index is widely used because it reflects purchasing managers' views on business conditions and provides early insights into economic trends. But despite this, Rao believes that growth assets like crypto and tech may not be adversely affected by a potential mild recession that could still happen because risk assets are forward-facing and this was likely priced in last year in the market already. Central banks such as the Federal Reserve, play a significant role in managing the business cycle. However, their decisions are often based in past economic data, usually lagging by six to eight months behind the current state. This delay means that their financial policies, like controlling interest rates, might not immediately align with what we're experiencing in the economy today and financial conditions that we're seeing. 
In Rawls' analysis, he underscores the importance of liquidity in driving market trends, especially in tech and cryptocurrency sectors. But what exactly is liquidity? In simple terms, liquidity refers to the availability and accessibility of money for investments and spending in the economy. It's about how easily money can flow inside these different sectors, fueling growth and investment. Central banks like the U.S. Federal Reserve play a crucial role in managing this liquidity, and they do this through various measures. One of the main things that most people know is lowering interest rates and implementing quantitative easing or QE. Lowering interest rates makes borrowing cheaper, encouraging businesses and individuals to take loans and spend more. This also increases economic activity and can stimulate growth in various sectors. Quantitative easing, most misunderstood as just printing money, is a more complex process. It involves the central bank buying government bonds and other financial assets to inject money directly into the financial system, benefiting high growth sectors like, you guessed it, tech and crypto. And when we understand this, we can see its impact on the economy and it leads us to another critical aspect of Rawls' framework, the distinction between secular and secular trends. Secular trends are major underlying shifts that influence economies and markets over extended periods, often spanning decades. These are not temporary changes or short-term fluctuations. They are profound transformations that reshape how economies function. Examples of such secular trends are things that we're witnessing today. The rise of AI, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, Demographic changes like aging population across various countries, global economic integration are all significant secular trends. In contrast, we have cyclical trends, which are shorter term economic fluctuations that occur within these overarching massive secular trends. And when I say shorter term, that is not within weeks. This is a span of over years or whatever that cyclical cycle follows. Bringing us to Rao Pal's concept of the exponential age that ties all of these secular trends together. We are heading into a transformative era marked by unparalleled technological advancements in diverse fields like AI, biotech, EV, at a never-before-seen growth rate. This era is characterized by exponential economic growth and new investment opportunities, potentially reshaping industries and global economic structures as we know it. All of these concepts that you have now, now will help us understand the heart of Rawls' everything code. Rawls' approach simplified is combining these three elements, secular drivers, secular trends, and the modern environment of high debt to build this comprehensive picture of the economy and markets to help us make better informed decisions about where and when to invest and how to act. Let's talk about an important part, the debt refinancing cycle. After 2008 financial crisis, central banks set interest rates extremely low and started quantitative easing. This was to help the economy recover, and they started doing this in cycles every few years since then. The Everything Code closely examines the levels of liquidity in the global financial system. It's a framework that helps us predict how the economy might grow or decline based on the actions of central banks, like injecting or withdrawing money from the system. Rao believes that this pattern of increased liquidity driven by the business cycle will continue to impact asset prices, particularly in tech and crypto into 2024 and 2025. Let's go down the rabbit hole a little bit more and go into why Rao Pal predicts we're entering a new central bank debt refi cycle. This cycle is a response to economic downturns and is where central banks like the Federal Reserve employ strategies like, again, lowering interest rates and QE to revive the economy. Raul identifies key indicators that are hinting at a renewed central bank action. These include sluggish GDP growth, the ISM index, which we covered earlier, which currently points to a weakening economy. The challenge also is of soaring national debt, which significantly increased from 2008 crisis and further during the COVID pandemic and looms large over the whole global entire economic landscape. As central banks potentially increase liquidity to tackle these debts, certain asset classes could witness substantial growth. Again, you might have guessed it in tech and crypto. 
Rao underscores that historically these sectors thrive in these high liquidity environments due to their cutting edge nature and appeal to growth minded investors. Moreover, Brazil's proactive approach in raising and then cutting interest rates ahead of the US, coupled with its emerging signs of inflation recovery already, sets a precedent for larger economies now. This recent trend in inflation and CPI show signs of stabilization, potential decline, and central banks might be encouraged to further loosen their monetary policies, which means injecting more liquidity into the economy. That means risk assets are going to love what's coming up. The looming fears of a deep recession are beginning to dissipate and starting to pave the way for a more dynamic economic environment eventually. But why does this matter in the discussion about the Bitcoin ETF? It's all about understanding the macroeconomic backdrop and our position in the economic cycle as we Enter the early stages of central bank monetary cycle, coupled with an onset of Bitcoin halving cycle, and the demand for Bitcoin could significantly escalate on top of the demand that we're going to see from the Bitcoin ETF. Points to a macro environment that's ripe for growth in risk assets in the long run, with the tech and crypto position at the forefront of this potential surge. Remember, predicting the economy is tricky. Even Raul Paul admits that he could be wrong. Plus, this is a macro framework that is geared for the long term over years with secular trends that are panning over decades. So keep this in mind. For the ETF, I'm keeping my expectations low. Like Anthony Pompliano says, don't expect miracles from the ETF. But now you're probably thinking, how does this all relate to crypto gaming and altcoins? I've been in crypto since 2018, and here's the potential cycle that I see happening. As the crypto market thrives, expect an eventual shift as the top cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum stabilize and their massive gains begin to plateau and level off. We're going to see or potentially see a notable shift in investment strategies at that time. Investors seeking higher returns will typically explore the realm of altcoins, making a strategic move down the risk curve. Basically, people are just going to be taking higher risk by diving into less established but potentially more lucrative assets to earn more. And the leading market narratives at the time are going to direct the attention and the money. So if the gaming narrative continues to strengthen, a potential gaming altcoin season could be fueled by the belief that the gaming sector represents the next big growth opportunity in the crypto world. Innovative games could grab the spotlight like we saw with the explosion of Axie Infinity previously. When a crypto gaming narrative is in full swing, crypto gaming is set to shine. With top projects with working games, a growing player base are going to be important. But what's more important is a game's ability to get attention and build it into hype. And during these cycles, typically that's all that you need for the short term. But the long term, the fundamentals are what are what are going to matter most if the game is fun, if it's addicting, and the team's execution. Which games will that be? I don't know. But all I know is that the game has to survive until then and look like a great opportunity, at least on paper. The excitement around gaming altcoins complements a much larger shift in the crypto landscape marked by anticipation of the approval of this Bitcoin ETF. The ETF is a big deal for all of crypto, not just Bitcoin, because it's not about the price going up. It's about changing how people perceive Bitcoin from something that might be called a scam to a serious part of the financial world. It's a huge step forward for all digital currencies, showing that it's here to stay and play a major role in our financial future. While I dedicate a small percent to higher risk things like swing trading NFTs, altcoins, crypto gaming, I still have the long-term discipline approach for Bitcoin and Ethereum where I do the boring but tried and true strategy of dollar cost averaging and holding, where I just stay the course or in Rahul Paul's words, I won't <laughs> this up. Let me know what you think of the Bitcoin ETF and let me know if you would prefer if I recorded this in several shorter videos instead of just making one massive financial deep dive. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to like this next video where I unearth the secrets of Bitcoin's history, a tale of rebirth from the ashes of the 2008 financial crisis and meltdown to its coronation as today's digital gold. So check that out.